Southern California, the epicenter of water polo in the United States, and Los Angeles, the host to the finale of an important series for two of the best in the world of international water polo, Hungary and Team USA, gearing up for the Tokyo Olympics, the El Segundo Aquatic Center in El Segundo, our venue for this one. Hi, everyone. Welcome, Poolside. Joined by the longtime college and national team coach, John Abdu. Greg Meskel here with you. Team USA and Hungary, John, such an important opportunity as they evaluate their squads with the Olympic Games coming up quick. Not a lot of opportunities to play high-level matches between now and the Olympic Games, so these games are crucial and a great opportunity not only to prepare for the games, but to evaluate the athletes and get their performance right on. These two teams ranked amongst the best in the world. They've played three games already. Here's what's transpired. We've had two of them for you right here on ESPNU. A week ago in Commerce, 14 to 9, Team USA coming out strong. They do it again in Irvine, and then they added a third game to this four game set this past weekend. And we talk about athletes with a chance to impress Jordan Rainey, Stephanie Harlebitis, trying to become first time Olympians. And that's huge, Greg. These games are opportunities not only to make the roster, but to prove that you deserve to be on the roster. And that's one of the beauties of Olympic sport, is you see great athletes become Olympians over the course of their career, and this is where it happens in the pool. Now, some breaking news here for Team USA. We thought tomorrow would be the day. That's when the Olympic team roster would be announced for the USA squad. Coach Adam Krikorian deciding he needed more time to evaluate in this pandemic-shortened season. They just haven't had the games. Yeah, I think that's across all sports, Greg, right? I think when we have an opportunity now to play games, you want to take advantage of every opportunity, not just games here, but games on the road when you're traveling. You want to see how athletes travel. You want to see how they do on the road, how we play in uh, quarterfinal games, semifinal games. So every game matters. Every data point matters to make the best and most educated decision possible. So the date now, not tomorrow. It'll be June 23rd, still here in Los Angeles. That provides two important weeks in Europe, trips to Spain and Greece ahead to determine who will head to Tokyo to represent the two-time defending Olympic champs. We've got a great one on the way. Hungary and Team USA, they've met in some of the biggest competitions around the globe. They'll do it again here tonight in El Segundo. We're back with your starters and more after this timeout right here on ESPN. Welcome back, Los Angeles, California. Team USA, number one ranked squad in the world. They've been there for quite some time. They welcome in fourth ranked Hungary. This is the finale of a four game set here in El Segundo. Let's get you set for the start of this one with our starting lineups. Here's a look at what Hungary puts forward and John, a lot of talent on this roster. Much like Team USA trying to figure out who will make their squad for Tokyo. Always a deep pipeline in Hungary where it's the national sport. Water polo is played everywhere. In, the, uh, in, in Hungary, especially in Marguerite Island, some yeah. of these beautiful spots we have in Hungary there, and so lots of talent across the board. Rita Castilla, the captain of this group. Across the way, we look at the Team USA squad, and as we told you, trying to narrow down their selection and a lot of returners from that Rio squad. And, it makes it all the more challenging because you have so many experienced athletes. And we have all that experience. It's also nice to have the balance of some first-time Olympians and some youth coming in. So what Coach Recorian has done incredibly well over the last two Olympics is find that balance between experience and youth. Let's take a look at two key players to focus on. We start first, Mackenzie Fisher. She emerged as a defender earlier in her career and now showing that she is so dominant on both sides of the ball. It's a coach's dream when one of your best offensive players can also play defense, and that's what Mackenzie Fisher does. She's an incredible shooter. She's a great analyst of the game. When you hear her talk about the game, the way she's seen it, she's matured incredibly uh, on the offensive side, but can also defend. And then across the way for Hungary, the New Zealander Rebecca Parks. 
moved to Hungary years ago to chase this Olympic dream and on the doorstep here with Hungary, she's battled all series long at two meters. Uh, and she's a tough, tough athlete, but Parks is a great example of how water polo is a game that's played inside out. You have to have great centers. You have to have athletes that can play with their back to the goal, their back to the basket. And this is what she does. Yeah, she is a force at two meters, draws exclusion. She'll try and do more of that opening sprint when we return after this quick timeout. You never know where the next Olympian might be coming from, but it could be water polo. And that starts with Splash Ball. Splash Ball is a program for children ages five through nine designed to introduce them to the sport of water polo while promoting water safety. Improve swimming skills and learn a sport you'll love for a lifetime. For more information, visit SplashBallUSA.org. ESPN's exclusive presentation of USA Women's Water Polo is brought to you by Turbo and Sea Air Federal Credit Union. USA, Hungary on the way. And John, we talked about it all series. It's possible those watching tonight, maybe they're seeing water polo for the first time. And so we talk some high level basic water polo rules here. Some of the key things to focus on for maybe newcomers. And I think one of the beautiful things about having water polo on TV right now is it introduce you to an exciting sport that combines so many other elements of all the sports that we love in the pool, in the water. Right? You have the ball, you have a goal, you have a goalie. It's like soccer slash basketball slash wrestling. You get a chance to, to, to play here for eight minute quarters. And at no time will any of the athletes be touching the side of the pool or the bottom of the pool. Yeah, they have to tread the entire time. It is a display of excellent fitness across the board. Everyone here is in great shape. Series history for these squads. It has been dominated as of late by Team USA as they have won the first three and last loss way back in 2014. But Hungary has closed the gap here. They have had some close contests at some of the major events across the FINA calendar. That's the international governing body for aquatics, including water polo. And these teams ready for the World League Super Final, one of the big competitions coming up in a couple of weeks in Athens, Greece. We're underway in this one. Hungary will control on offense. Hungarians moving left to right on your screen. They've got the Dark Caps Team USA in the white as we get started here. First offensive possession on a Wednesday evening in El Segundo, California. John Abdu, Greg Meskel joining you here. Thanks for being with us for this water polo exhibition and defense there from Elise Williams denies that entry pass. Hey, we opened the broadcast with a segment on Parks playing such great uh, offense at the center position. Team USA opens up in a heavy zone already and you'll see that zone is because of how dominant Parks is in the middle of the pool. Yeah, that's just true respect for the two meter player. And looking to force things from the outside. Team USA now goes inside, sight him in the quick turn and score and they get their center play involved early. Love it. You'd love to see the center action happen. Coaches love to see this. The game played inside out. It creates space. Melissa Seidem with a power move. You get another look here. Beautiful entry pass from Mackenzie Fisher right on the hand. Little bobble. Melissa Seidem and puts a top shelf cross cage. And we talked about Mackenzie Fisher early on as someone who's adept on both offense and defense. Seidem right there. She's become a key offensive player now. And that's what makes Seidem one of the all-time greats. I think a first ballot Hall of Famer for, for Team USA because she can play center, center defender, and really have the most versatile attack on the game yeah one of two returners alongside maggie stephens from the london 2012 squad so has two gold medals looking for a third skip shot here that'll sail wide of the cage johnson lets that go on the attempt from distance from christina garda it's a little overcast here in el segundo 61 degrees partly cloudy we've seen the sun peek out from behind the clouds and providing a bit of a glare during warm-ups but Behind the clouds at the moment. They go back to sight him in. This time she'll draw an exclusion. So a power play opportunity now. Six on five here. A 20 second exclusion for Hungary. So the advantage now for the red, white, and blue. Here's Fisher now. Swings near side. Maddie Musselman works along that two meter line to Kaylee Gilchrist. Nuschel around the way. Musselman denied. Good stop. Alda Majari coming up with the block with her left hand. All in all, great defense by the Hungarians. Majari with the stop, but they did the right thing. Garda did not want to see Melissa Seidemann score a second goal from the center position, takes the exclusion, and they took their chances on the power play. And if you're familiar with the old Hackashack days where they give the foul to 
not allow the dunk. It's a bit similar here in water polo. Give that exclusion. They don't want to see Seidemann have an easy one. Ab absolutely, Greg. Make the other team earn it from outside. Don't give them the inside looks. Ordinary foul here. You'll hear whistles accumulate. They do not necessarily count. There's a stop by Johnson. Those quick short whistles on the perimeter, just ordinary fouls. They don't tally up for the athletes. It's a quick stoppage and we play on. Here's Johnson, one of the best to do it in goal. And now advancing Mackenzie Fisher, defender giving chase. Jamie Neuschel controlling. Good look inside, redirect, knocked away. Majari denying that Elise Williams try in close. Nice attempt on the front doorstep for Team USA. Great effort from Elise Williams and a beautiful vision from Jamie Neuschel. Seeing the drive happen, puts the ball right in her hand for a high percentage look. So Hungary looking to get on the board. They have seen Team USA get off to great starts during this series. And that's been really the name of the game for this U.S. squad. They will deliver a knockout blow sometimes in the first quarter. Entry in, and Johnson takes it. Great athleticism there from Ashley Johnson to come out and make the steal. I think both teams, I think we'll see a close game all the way across the board. They're going to put all effort in this, the last game of the series before World League Super Final. So I don't expect to see that blow out here early on, Greg. Here's Gilchrist. Now Musselman. Williams around the way. Fisher. Shot clock to five. Gives to Musselman. They play catch. It's Fisher's shot. She goes inside. Seidemann couldn't gather and finish as the shot clock was about to expire. And Hungary will take over. And you talked about close games. Team USA thrilled to have any sort of game. They went over 450 days without a competition. Met Canada a couple of weeks back for their first games since early 2020, and they're thrilled to just be playing anybody. Yeah, games are needed, and then hence part of the reason why you see this team naming and some of these announcements getting pushed back. We need as many games as possible. Athletes need to play, teams need to play together before they can compete at the highest level in Tokyo Olympics. Oh, great look. Fisher to Nuschel right in front, put it away, and Team USA adds another 2 0, a quick start as Nuschel from Mackenzie Fisher. Second look here. They've got the advantage. Fisher knows what to do with the Jamie Neuschel. Doesn't miss from there. 2-0 early. Which one? Yellow? Yellow. Now blue? No, orange. Now blue. Bringing the sport out to the East Coast and just outside of California has been a big part of my mission as well. Uh, water polo is centered in Southern California, and um, I think there's a lot of talent throughout the U.S. There's a lot of good coaching. There's a lot of different players who maybe haven't gotten seen. And by spreading the message of water polo everywhere and water polo for everyone, I think that it's just going to make a huge difference in growing our sport and improving access to the opportunity in our sport. Great stuff from Ashley Johnson. You'll hear more from her at halftime on the role she's played, not only in the water, but perhaps more importantly, in communities around the country and the way she's been able to spread the good word on this sport and so much more. And her resume, John, it speaks for herself. People talk about her being the best goalie in the world. Beyond the accolades, what do you see? There's no doubt she's the best goalie in the world. Could be the best to ever play the position in, on either side. She may be known as the Lisa Leslie of, yeah. of water polo. Just someone who will be, again, another first ballot Hall of Famer. But her impact is because the representation matters and everybody can see it. I'm looking forward to hearing more at halftime from Ashley and my partner John Abdu. So stay tuned for that. Here's the first power play now for Hungary. The exclusion on Paige Hoschild as Team USA gets into their bench. A little sense of their depth. One of the other greats in the world of water polo, Maggie Steffens, didn't start. Here's the skip. Johnson there with the stop, and Team USA kills off that first power play for the Hungarians. Sides come even. 
Castillo rushes the shot a little bit on the power play. They get their first opportunity to score there. That will be the first, but certainly not the last opportunity for the Hungarians, Greg. This series started with Team USA struggling on the six on five and Hungary doing a really nice job of commerce last week as Jordan Rainey sails wide. Team USA came back the next day in Irvine. They executed on that power play at a level that I'm sure they wish they could bottle up and carry into every game. There was something like eight for 10. Yeah. It can really tell the story of a match. It really does. And for everybody watching at home, that power play, you get a six on five opportunity. That's where the ball's moving. The other team is forced to play some zone zone defense. It's where a lot of goals are scored in, scored in water polo. If anytime you see a natural goal away from the power play, those are goals that are really matter because that power play matters so much at the end of the line score. Adora Limiter controlling works to Anna Illish. Illish with five on the timer. Fires that pass across the way, and Johnson's ready for it on the attempt from Doratya Silagi from the outside. And the Miami, Florida native is piling up the saves early here. And now pushing ahead to the left-hander, Stephanie Harlebitis on the drive. Harlebitis now works to Stephens, the team captain. Now Rainey. Shot clock to 10 for Team USA. Aria Fisher's on working in at two meters. Timer to four. Stephens has got to go. Deals to Howard Labidis, and that's denied. Majari ready from the outside as the shot clock was about to expire. Majari, a rising talent, just 20 years old. Completes for the Duna Uivaros Club in Hungary, one of the teams that these athletes are divided up on into Hungary to play at that pro level when they're not competing with their national teams. And Coach Attila Biro is so excited about what this young athlete will bring to the squad, not just this year, but looking forward. She's a testament of that Hungarian pipeline we talked about earlier in the broadcast, Greg. Keep an eye on Majari. She's a rising star, a potential Olympian uh, this summer, and a lot more to come. Kestiyi fires inside. They're out of time, looking to connect in close with two meters and Gyeong Yoshi, who was in a real battle with Maggie Steffens, and they just ran out of an opportunity there on the shot clock. So st still 2 nothing, Team USA, under two to play in the first. Steffens now. Deals to Hosh Child, works to Rainey. Little bobble there on the perimeter. Rachel Fatal, lob try, bar out, could not connect, had the keeper beat across the way, but just off the mark. We'll keep talking about Majari, but Fatal tried to put a nice touch, a lob across there, but that also is a testament to Majari's positioning in the goal, right? Fading her in, into that shot. And something else, if you're listening and watching this uh, broadcast right now, try to hear her voice. When you hear great goalkeepers play, you can hear them. When you see goal, great goalkeepers, you can hear them, and it happens again. And then a great goal scorer delivers the first of the night for Hungary, Rita Kestiyi, the 29-year-old captain, a two-time Olympian, trying to make her third games representing Hungary here in transition. Kind of a secondary break. Kesti finds a lane and rips it. If you give Kesti that much space, she's going to put it away more often than not. A good look. Secondary fast break. It's our, uh, now our third basketball reference, Greg. We've got a few more, <laughs> few more to come, but it's like that secondary fast break. You get the first line down as far as you can. The second line coming if they still have an advantage. Kesti gets the open shot and puts it away. Here's a look at Attila Biro, the head coach for Hungary. Came on board in 2015. A year out from an Olympic Games, the team hadn't qualified. Talk about a tall order. Comes on board, gets them qualified. They perform fairly well in Rio, and now mm -hmm. trying to build off of that with really a new team since about 2018. He kept some of the veterans, but a lot of new talent. And he's done a phenomenal job. I and mean, you see this team compete for a medal in every tournament that they play in. They've been great in European championships and great in European qualifiers and great uh, across the board. And uh, there's a reason why they're here trying to compete against the best team USA to prepare for the Tokyo Olympics. And yeah, they've made every Olympic game since 2004, a sixth place finish there in Athens. And then they've been trying to crack that podium. Fourth place finish in 08 and 12 and 16. Jordan Rainey, Hushchild, a fake, not there. Rainey lets fly, Majari adds another. So Alda Majari knocks down Yet another save here, a nice first quarter. We talked about this game being a closer one in the series, Greg. It's still only a 2-1 lead for Team USA. They've had much larger leads in the first half of, of the first part of this series. I think you'll see this close score throughout the game. And this is not all that uncommon. After a week plus of training, teams start to figure each other out. You get acclimated. We see an exclusion now, a power play. Aria Fisher will go off. Hungry here with their second chance in the six on five. Shot clock is off. Final 13 seconds here of this opening quarter. 
looking for the tie. Limiter off the post. The ricochet, a rebound, tracked down. Save Johnson on that attempt, and that's where we end this first quarter. Team USA kills off the power play for the second time in these opening eight minutes. Anna Illish is denied at the buzzer by Ashley Johnson. Good start for Team USA, but a close battle early on in their fourth meeting with Hungary over the last two weeks. We're back with the second quarter after this. Yeah, so my dad and uncle swam for the Canada team in two Olympic Games. Uh, my dad actually swam in Tokyo in 1964, so that'll be special if I can get back down there and, um, you know, 57 years later and compete in the same Olympic Games. If we can be successful in, in Tokyo, I think it's a thank you to everyone that's helped. And I know we got a big contingency rooting us on from home, but we'll miss them dearly down there. And what a great story. Kaylee Gilchrist, her dad Sandy, all those years ago in the 1964 game swimming for Team Canada. And now his daughter Kaylee trying to continue this tradition for Team USA. And they have just taken over the water polo world since 2012. Yeah, and KG, the ultimate teammate, just a great person to have on the, on the roster. And, and keep an eye out. I expect at least one no-look pass from her at some point <laughs> in this game today. She's just someone who's always looking to set her teammates up and, and a great Olympian. Looking to return for her second game and after a gold in Rio. Good look inside. That'll be a penalty. Excellent maneuver in close. We told you about Rebecca Parks, and she maneuvers in close and is able to draw the penalty. And now a shot try coming from five meters. Powerful move from Parks there to draw the penalty shot. This is taken from five meters out. A real high percentage look here. Here's Christina Garda. Ashley got a piece of it, and she got enough. No goal. Johnson rising up to knock that one away. It trickled behind her. That might have gone in, but she got enough off the cage and away. Unbelievable save from Ashley Johnson. They take a look, quick look at the Hungarian coach, Attila Bira, just shaking his head. Not something that you can defend. And now Team USA looking to add. They go up on the six on five. The exclusion against Von de Vai of Hungary. Here's Fatal. Gilchrist now, Team USA with a chance for two-goal swing. Timer to five. Williams, bar out. Majari there again. So Team USA, John, with a big chance on the block. That can be so demoralizing and then go the other end and score, but the hungry defense holds up. Team USA misses the opportunity for a two-point swing like you talk about there, Greg. But both teams, neither team has scored in a power play yet. We have to see that bubble burst at some point. Yeah, right now, hungry 0 for 2. Team USA 0 for 2 as well. Just an ordinary call. Opening moments here, second quarter. Team USA and Hungary. And that'll be an offensive foul. So activity there from Parks on this time down. A little too aggressive. She's called for the offensive foul. In transition, we'll see an exclusion. And so Team USA will get their third opportunity on the advantage. That was Such on the exclusion there. A backcourt exclusion. Coaches don't like to see that happen. Power play opportunity and a score. Beautifully done. In close. Maddie Musselman cashing in for Team USA. And there's your first power play strike. So Team USA, third time's a charm. There are one for three as you get a second look here. Beautiful faking. Great ball movement. There's the pass from KG like we talked about. Maddie Musselman on the post just gets her fingertips on it to get it past Majori. And we figured our first power play score for Team USA. Closer look at Maddie Musselman, the UCLA Bruin out of Newport Beach, California. And another one of these athletes that quickly emerged on the road to Rio and did it at a young age as, as a teenager on the way up. And you get that early experience, and now these are still young athletes, Musselman, the Fisher sisters, but they feel like veterans. 
and they've been playing together for a long time to boot, Greg. They've been in the Olympic Development Program for a long time, playing in games together, Youth World Championships, Junior World Championships, and now they find themselves on the senior team playing in the Olympic Games. Nice turn by Parks, good enough to draw an ordinary foul. Shot clock stays at 11. Steffen's there defending in a battle, and again an offensive, and so Parks back-to-back -back contra fouls. This time, the official ruling a grab of the suit as Maggie Steffens was defending. Referees in this one, Scott Voltz, Michael Goldenberg, and notable here, Goldenberg on the near side of your screen, he'll represent the United States at the Olympic Games. So each country can send in a referee, and he'll be the USA representative in the water polo competition. Fatal now to Gilchrist. Elise Williams in at two meters. Shot clock to five. It's Fatal. Catch and release. Rachel Fatal from the outside. Beautiful ball movement from Team USA. Do you see that ball flying around the perimeter, ending up in Fatal's hands? Musselman finishes to Fatal. We call that a catch and shoot, a catch and release. The second Fatal gets it, releases the ball, and it comes right off her arm like a whip, and Majori had no chance to get it. 4 1 Team USA. And quick fakes, getting that defense moving. Again, every shooter here on the perimeter, a threat for Team USA, so they have to respect all those fakes. And that's what a lot of this is, just getting those defenders slightly out of position. It opens a lane up for Fatal. Now pressure here from Team USA on defense. And a little bit too heavy and an exclusion. Hungary up on the six on five once more, looking for their first conversion. Steffens goes out, so she drew two contra fouls on Parks at two meters, and now it goes the other way, the exclusion. Limiter, the left-hander, works back outside. Garda lets it go. Johnson thought she might have gotten a piece of that. They'll say field blocked in front of her. That's out of bounds off of Fatal. And it'll go the other way. Good look here at Team USA head coach Adam Krikorian on the scene since 2009. Former UCLA head man. On this end, an exclusion. So the opportunity's piling up now. Nearing the halfway mark of this second quarter. Here's Musselman. Again, patience from Team USA. Gilchrist lets it go. Low skip in. That is denied. Hungarian defense in front. Dora Antal and then Alda Majari to knock that one away. We've already talked how much how important the six on five is, but the five on six equally important, if not more important, be able to stop other teams' power plays. And we've seen two stops on both ends here on power play opportunities. Yeah, the best teams, they pride themselves on that five on six defense. We told you about the premise of giving exclusions. It's all because you have confidence in that player down defense to get the job done. Shot clock to four. From the outside, what a rope. Natasha Rabanska from the perimeter paints the high corner and with that we'll take a timeout hungry getting one back after team usa starting to pile up the advantage rabanska here look at that shot rabanska a couple of fakes top shelf four two time's running out they need to score hola we need you get in there but wait, Coach Kerkorian has just subbed in their secret weapon, Lola the dog. She shoots. She scores! Yeah! The final weeks leading up to Olympic roster selection, it's a chance to try and stand out. We've got a few athletes looking to make that push. One potential first-timer, Jordan Rainey. She's played well to start off this series against Hungary. Three goals in the first game, then three in the next, then one in the third. And then you add in, it's her birthday today, John. So turn 20, 25 today and getting a little pat there from Amanda Longan on the bench and uh, making it rainy indeed, a good start. Yeah, happy birthday, Jordan Rainey. Turned 25 today. She's had a great series. You see her maybe uh, mimicking some of the fakes she's had uh, over the last few games. She's putting away, shooting the ball really well, but also someone who plays great defense, is a great teammate, and an Olympic hopeful here in 2021. Yeah, she's seen her role change a bit from more defender to a bit more of an attacker position, and it's opened up some things offensively. Here's Fatal. 
that'll be an exclusion. Now Team USA on their fifth, six on five. They're one for four so far. Exclusion goes against Gyang Yoshi. Paige Hoshchild. Now Musselman, a little fake. Fisher, they try and thread the needle. Musselman tries to clean it up. Save Majari. Rebound. Seidemann emerges. She was underwater, surfaces, and gathers up the loose ball. Shot clock will reset to 20. Team USA can go back to work. It's an offensive rebound for uh, Melissa Seidemann, second possession. And then with the shot clock to one, they draw the exclusion. So another six on five after they failed to convert on that most recent try. This is extended offense here for Team USA. That's Multiple Rabonska. possessions there for Team USA. Let's see if they can pay themselves off. Rabonska excluded. A little high there on the pass. Shot clock to five. Here's Musselman to two. Tries to go inside at the horn. What passing. Musselman to Seidemann right on the post. And she buries it. One try, two try, then pay off the athlete who got the offensive rebound for you. Gives us a multiple possessions right on the hand. Get a second look here on the six on five power play. Musselman moves inside the two meter line. You see she's targeting Seidemann the whole way. Puts the ball right in her hand with that loft pass for the dunk. On this end, six on five. Hungry now on the advantage. That'll be Mackenzie Fisher going off. Hungry, desperate to convert. 0 for 3 right now. Trailing 5-2. Limiter out high, in close. That's deflected off the frame of the cage. Johnson stepping up to try and turn away that attempt from Dara Antal in close. And now Hungry 0 for 4. Team USA 2 for 6 on the 6 on 5. It's a number we talk about a lot, but it can really tell the story of a game. Fatal faking. Mackenzie Fisher. Shot clock to three. Here's Fatal. Let's it go. Skip a little high, and that'll bounce up over the cage and away. And we talked about backcourt exclusions being yeah. something coaches don't like to see. We have one here. That's Rachel Fatal with the exclusion. You see Majori calling out. You can hear her guiding her team now. Another six on five opportunity for the Hungarians. Let's see if they can convert their first one. This will be Antal cruising in at two meters. The former Cal Bear now works outside to Salagi. Hungary's had some looks, and that one sails wide. So this has been a theme here through this first half. They've gotten the power play opportunities, now 0 for 5. But either that Team USA defense gets in the way, or in that last instance, the shot just goes wide. And that's the difference between winning and losing games, because you hear uh, you see Coach Biro nodding his head. He knows, right? Six on five is the difference between this game being 5-2 or 5-5. Five, five. Musselman, first passing, now shooting. Maddie Musselman, her second in this first half and showing the full arsenal. And a rare natural goal in the game. Watch this soft touch. You see perfect body positioning for Musselman. Couple of fakes, keeps it high in that position and puts it cross cage low. Beautiful shot from Musselman. 6-2, Team USA. And if you haven't seen much of Maddie Musselman, she brings such variety to her shot. This is someone that mm. went through some arm injuries, some shoulder problems years ago, was a great player, and is now fully healthy. And so it's almost dangerous to think about what she brings being truly at 100% for the first time in yeah. some time. But it's the goal towards the post. It's the lob shot. It's the direct shot. She has so many weapons on offense. Uh, absolutely. She's turning into one of the most dangerous shooters in the world based on that ability to control the ball in her hand as another exclusion against Team USA. This is getting whistle heavy here in this first half. The exclusion there on Paige Hoschild. So she has two first half fouls. Three and you're out. So that's something for Kerkorian to keep an eye on. Limiter now. Out to Kestiyi. A variety of fakes, and finally Hungary breaks through on the six on five. Rita Castillo converting now one for six, and the second goal in this one for the captain. Hungary gets their first power play goal of the game. Castillo, several fakes. Look at all the shot blocks from Team USA. Great position. She threads the needle through three shot blocks. Watch this again. 
That's a high degree of difficulty <laughs> for Castilla to put that ball away. But Hungary desperately needed that goal, as you said, Greg, and keeps the lead at three for Team USA. Yeah, not for lack of effort there on the defensive side of things for Team USA, but like most goal sports, there's certain parts of the cage. If you can get it there, you will have yourself a score. On this end now, a penalty is drawn. Aria Fisher in at two meters. She draws a crowd and is able to pick up the penalty shot try opportunity for the U.S. Looks like Maddie Musselman will step forward looking for a first half hat trick. Well executed set piece there from Coach Corian and Team USA after goal play. That leads to Paige Hoschild to the entry to Aria Fisher to the penalty shot. Musselman able to convert on the skip. And Team USA does the job on their first penalty try and Maddie Musselman with three goals here in this first half. Watch her skip the ball here. She puts the ball straight up and then off the water. Those are really difficult to block. Skips it right into that uh, top shelf. And going back to our, our, our basketball references and team sport references, anytime you are scored on, Coach Corian gets the opportunity to draw up a play. So they have set pieces they've worked on in practice all week long. They did give up the goal to Kestiyi, but it gives them a chance to run that set piece, which led to the drawn penalty and the goal for Matty Musselman. And we've talked about preparing for those big tournaments like the Olympics. These are those moments you can try and replicate in practice but you need the actual live game competition to see how you'll fare and so they're collecting a lot of data during this series moving forward just about out of time in this first half and there'll be an exclusion called Elise Williams goes off shot clock is done but the power play intact for Hungary here eight seconds left looking for one more before the break Salagi, a few fakes. That's field blocked in a way. Mackenzie Fisher, Maggie Steffens there. Johnson lets fly. And that's all for this first half. And Team USA taking control in this second quarter, John, between their defensive efforts. Hungry just one for six on the power play and then starting to convert on their own six on fives. It was able to create a little bit of a gap. Five on six, the key to the game, getting stops against the power play for Hungary. And Team USA starting to get the engine rolling on offense. And you're going to see it seven goals in the first half. And if this keeps going, Greg, we're going to see an offensive showcase in the second half. No doubt about it. Maddie Musselman, three goals to get things started. Melissa Seidemann adding two. Jamie Neuschel getting on the board early as well. For Hungary, we saw Rita Kestiyi with a couple, including finally getting the Hungarians on the board on that six on five. And so they'll try and build off of that. Yes, Team USA in control here, 7-3. But as you've alluded to, no reason to think that Hungary will fold up the tents here. This is their last game. They're going to go for it as we close out this four-game series. And now let's welcome in Maddie Musselman joining us here after three big first-half goals. Maddie, thanks for joining us here, just getting out of the pool. That first half, three goals for you. Just tell us about the balance on offense. Between your scoring and passing, there are so many threats for Team USA. Yeah, I mean, Hungary runs a really good zone. They get some big blocks up in there, and I think it's really important that we set each other, each other up, make those extra passes, because that's really important for us um, in order to be able to finish, especially with their goalies as well. Hey, Maddie, Coach Abdu here. You look, looks like you're real comfortable holding the ball, shooting the ball real well. How, do, how does your arm feel? How does the body feel? And how are you feeling as we get closer and closer to playing abroad internationally as we prep for the games? Yeah, I mean, these games have been great just to get that game experience. Um, it's different than practice for sure, just to have these competitive teams come out here and train with us. Um, and it's definitely a testament to our training, um, the way that these games feel for us, to be comfortable with the ball in our hand and to be able to finish when we have to finish. All right, Maddie Musselman, great start. Best of luck in the second half. Thank you. Maddie Musselman, three goals for Team USA. Also doing the job distributing the ball. Ashley Johnson, she's doing the job in cage as well. We have her story coming up at the break. Halftime here in El Segundo, a 7-3 lead for Team USA.
Halftime here, brought to you by New Little Pet Food. Team USA leading Hungary 7-3, the finale of an important four-game exhibition series on the road to the Tokyo Olympics. We told you about one of the key returners for Team USA, goalkeeper Ashley Johnson. There's no doubt how dominant she is in the water, but the impact she's having away from the pool is almost more important. It's key that representation matters. I've realized that over my career, I can do so much for bringing diversity into water polo by just being here and being who I am and competing and just like speaking on the topic of diversity and inclusion. And I've made it my mission to do so and to be a role model and a mirror for young black girls and black boys to look up and see themselves in and just represent, you know, because there aren't a lot of people of color, there aren't a lot of black women, there aren't a lot of black men in our sport. And spreading the message of water polo everywhere and water polo for everyone, I think that it's just gonna make a huge difference in growing our sport. All of us in water polo, all of us in aquatics who are fighting for inclusivity, equity, diversity, and the things that we're trying to do, have personal experiences that go with that. And Ashley has those personal experiences, but she also has done the work. So Ashley actually speaks to these things very well and it's because she has lived it personally and I think that's the difference that is so important for us. To watch her have an impact on not just young black girls in our sport but in other sports across the world not just in our country everywhere we go I mean she's a celebrity and she is partly because of her play and also partly just because of her personality and her infectiousness and her uh, a huge smile and it, it's been fun to watch her develop and, and really embrace the role of, of being a role model for, for the young ones. It's really important for young people to see someone that looks like them doing something that they didn't think they could do. And that's why if you can see it, you can be it. And Ashley Johnson represents that for all of us in aquatics. I have so many of those stories where someone came up to me and they're like, I want to play against you. I want to be you. I want to like compete on the USA national team. And one specific story I can share is a young black girl in Holland, actually. She came up to me and she's like, I'm going to beat you one day. I'm going to get in the pool and we're going to play against each other and I'm going to beat you. And I was like, do it. <laughs> get in. Keep playing. Do it. Let's get in now. <laughs> because I, it just made me so excited how excited she was. And I know what she must have faced, like being the only one, because I've been there, right? That little girl was me. So it was just really cool to see that enthusiasm and know that she was looking up to me and that I, just by being here, was inspiring her to be here. In this family, you play fast, you play furious, and when the stakes are this high, bad blood is going to run in the family. This is my world. Halftime here, brought to you by New Little Pet Food. Team USA leading Hungary 7-3, the finale of an important four-game exhibition series on the road to the Tokyo Olympics. We told you about one of the key returners for Team USA, goalkeeper Ashley Johnson. There's no doubt how dominant she is in the water, but the impact she's having away from the pool is almost more important. It's key that representation matters. 
I've realized that over my career, I can do so much for bringing diversity into water polo by just being here and being who I am and competing and just like speaking on the topic of diversity and inclusion. And I've made it my mission to do so and to be a role model and a mirror for young black girls and black boys to look up and see themselves in and just represent, you know, because there aren't a lot of people of color, there aren't a lot of black women, there aren't a lot of black men in our sport and spreading the message of water polo everywhere and water polo for everyone, I think that it's just going to make a huge difference in growing our sport. All of us in water polo, all of us in aquatics who are fighting for inclusivity, equity, diversity and the things that we're trying to do have personal experiences that go with that and Ashley has those personal experiences but she also has done the work. So Ashley actually speaks to these things very well and it's because she has lived it personally and I think that's the difference that is so important for us. To watch her have an impact on not just young black girls in our sport but in other sports across the world not just in our country everywhere we go I mean she's a celebrity and she is partly because of her play and also partly just because of her personality and her infectiousness and her a uh, huge smile and it, it's been fun to watch her develop and, and really embrace the role of, of being a role model for, for the young ones. It's really important for young people to see someone that looks like them doing something that they didn't think they could do. And that's why if you could see it, you can be it. And Ashley Johnson represents that for all of us in aquatics. I have so many of those stories where someone came up to me and they're like, I want to play against you. I want to be you. I want to like compete on the USA national team. And one specific story I can share is a young black girl in Holland, actually. She came up to me and she's like, I'm going to beat you one day. I'm going to get in the pool and we're going to play against each other and I'm gonna beat you. And I was like, do it, <laughs> get in, keep playing, do it. Let's get in now. Because I, it just made me so excited how excited she was. And I know what she must have faced, like being the only one, because I've been there, right? That little girl was me. So it was just really cool to see that enthusiasm and know that she was looking up to me and that I, just by being here, was inspiring her to be here. In this family, you play fast, you play furious, and when the stakes are this high, bad blood is going to run in the family. This is my world. Welcome back. Halftime here in El Segundo, just down the road from the LA Lakers practice facility. And I think back to their dominant teams, John, anyone could be the one to step up on a given day. And that's what this Team USA squad has. Anyone can be that James Worthy, that Robert Ory, that what? Byron Scott, that Matty Musselman. That Ma Michael Cooper, right? That Michael Thompson. You never know. Yeah. Everyone steps up as you see Matty Musselman's package here. Gets the goal on the post. Then gets the assist to Melissa Seidemann for the dunk. Just an all-around talent for Matty Musselman. Yeah, showing the full range of her skills, both on the shooting end and then on the passing end, as you talked about. And the facilitation that this team...
Team USA offense brings. It leaves defenders unsure of where they should go. You see the Hungarians trying to stay in position as we look at some first half numbers. The power play, it does tell a story. Team USA two for six, not thrilled with that number. I'd imagine Hungary, of course, one for seven. They can't be happy either. It is a testament to both sides, five player defense. And both teams getting their opportunities, as you see. Each, each team has drawn a penalty. That means they each took a penalty shot. They've had seven or six power play opportunities. And that's why when you look at coaching and you look at analyzing water polo, you come back to well, how, where did we fail, where did we succeed, that those power play statistics mean so much. It can mean the difference between winning and losing. And Team USA going two for six right now on, on their power play is just slightly better than Hungary, but it's enough to keep that four-goal lead. Yeah, 7-3 advantage right now for Team USA, thanks in large part to Matty Musselman. Hungary will try and battle back. Third quarter opening sprint on the way after this timeout. You never know where the next Olympian might be coming from, but it could be water polo. And that starts with Splash Ball. Splash Ball is a program for children ages 5 through 9 designed to introduce them to the sport of water polo while promoting water safety. Improve swimming skills and learn a sport you'll love for a lifetime. For more information, visit SplashBallUSA.org. Los Angeles, California, Team USA leading Team Hungary 7-3, all part of a USA Water Polo Showcase here tonight. Nell Segundo, all part of preparation for the Tokyo Olympic Games for USA head coach Adam Krikorian and the squad gearing up to first determine their team. That will come June 23rd, a move from tomorrow to June 23rd to figure out who will take on this schedule as they'll open up in Tokyo with Japan. That's a tall order. Japan, their squad improving every year, and then they'll see this very same Hungarian team right away in group play. Yeah, and that's why these games are so important. You get some familiarity, but as the saying goes, familiarity breeds contempt. <laughs> and this, you will see this in the second half. You're going to see some fire from both teams as they want to play the last 16 minutes of water polo before they go to Tokyo. And if you're wondering who's ROC, that is the Russian delegation. That's how they'll be mm -hmm. abbreviated, not able to compete under the Russian flag uh, due to previous sanctions, but they will be competing at the Olympic Games under ROC and they're a competitive group as well and so it won't be any easy walk back to the top of the podium for Team USA as they prepare and Coach Krikorian knows that well you don't win all the things this guy has won and the resume there's not enough room on the graphic machine no, to fit everything no. he's won this is a small sampling yeah, Co Coach Krikorian's been a winner as, as an athlete as an NCAA coach, as, a, as an Olympic coach, he's done he's done it ac across the board. But that's not an easy task, regardless of the talent level of team, regardless of the competition that, that that's in front of you. To be able to win a third medal this summer in the Olympic Games will be quite an accomplishment. Yeah, this squad has already entered rarefied air when you're talking about the most world championships of any women's program, mm -hmm. the most Olympic golds. They're the only nation to medal at every Olympic Games to offer women's water polo. So they've already written the history book and now they're just adding chapters we're underway here in the third hungry to start things off they control the opening sprint hungarians moving right to left in the dark caps team usa in the white shot clock to two salagi from the outside ashley johnson bats that one away with the left and out of play so we learn all about ashley johnson at halftime and then you see her with the left hand save a cross cage outside shot there wonderful save look at that being balanced on her legs Gets that shot out, and that's the backbone of Team USA's defense and their gold medal hopes. Yeah, an excellent job by you, by Ashley, by Coach Krikorian in that halftime story. And Ashley works hard in the pool, but working hard to, to get that story out as well as we see Anna Illish hit for her first goal, another former Cal Bear familiar with a lot of these athletes from the college water polo ranks, and she's able to bury a shot from the perimeter. Watch Illish here. She looks away, looks away twice, and then catches Ashley off guard to put, put the ball away near side. Look at the eyes and the ball movement with, with her head, the ball fake. That's how she's able to sink that goal in and cut the lead to three here early in the third quarter. 2016 Olympian for Hungary, now 27 years old. She plays for the FTC club in Hungary. Now Musselman works to Steffens. Here's Gilchrist. Entry in, Fisher working, she'll draw the exclusion. And a look of frustration on the face of Such, but then a big block. Majari comes across to deny that six on five attempt, but they can't keep it inbounds. 
So Hungary thought they had the block and they're ready to go counterattack, but it was out of play. Yeah, but either way, that goal line right behind the goal is out of bounds in water polo. Even though the sideline is in, the goal line is out, but Majori stepping up and proving how big of a star she's going to be in the cage. Sides even, step in, skip bar out, controlled. Now Hungary will have it back. Sides come even there, so Team USA moves to two for seven on the advantage as Maggie Steffens moves back into the defensive end. I heard Majori whisper, ball don't lie, as she's making that outlet <laughs> pass. Get the team back going here. She definitely felt like they should have had it in possession. Here's Kestie. Let's it go, and Johnson there now with the right hand knocking it away. So Ashley Johnson back to back stops, but much like Majari, she couldn't keep it in play. And it's back in at two meters for Hungary. Good, good saves on both sides by goalkeepers. Just tough luck there to keep possession. But Hungary gets a second shot now to try to cut the lead to two. Ordinary called. On the perimeter now. Illish works to Such. Two minutes gone by, third quarter. Such a few fakes, tries to pour it inside. And the crash is there. Aria Fisher, one of three white caps that converges to take it away from Rebecca Parks. Team USA showing a lot of respect for Parks. That's a heavy zone. There's a lot of people back. They're putting the double team, triple team, making sure she doesn't get clean looks on the goal. And now Stefan's looking for a clean look. She has Aria Fisher to work with. Now Jordan Rainey. Gilchrist pops it inside. Fatal up on her legs, but a denial there for Majari. Alda Majari getting the start here. Hungary really working on their goalkeeping position. They had three different starters in the first three games. And now the up-and-comer Majari gets the second start of this series. Here's Illish, full head of steam. Lob try. That's over the cage and away. Defense leads to offense. Big saves from Majari leads to that counterattack. And you see a lot of white water behind Hungary right now. As you see that goal just go right over. Good idea. So lost the touch. But lots of action up and down the pool right now, Greg. Both Johnson and Majari, eight saves apiece. As we're about midway through the third. Here's Rainey. Outside Musselman. Now Steffens catch and release. They make it look easy. The second time we've seen Team USA rip one from the outside. And Maggie Steffens this time, the beneficiary of excellent passing. And watch, the longer the cross pass, the catch release comes, it moves, it starts with Rainey to Musselman, over to Steffens. One, two, go, right off that catch and shoot, into the top shelf. Beautiful team offense from Team USA. Maggie Steffens out of the East Bay of Northern California, Stanford Cardinal, multiple NCAA titles on the farm, and really made her name in water polo to the world at the 2012 Olympic Games in London, was emerging as a phenom. This was someone that people in the water polo community, she was 9, 10, 11 years old playing with grown women. Right. And the word was, you have to see Maggie Steffens. You have to see what she can do in the water. And then she showed everyone in 2012, seven goals in the opening game against Hungary, mm -hmm. tie an Olympic record. Talk about a hello world moment for yeah. someone. Yeah, very, very familiar with Maggie Steffens. Everyone should be a crossbow. One of the best athletes in the world, regardless of sport, as we see the shot inside. It's Ashley Johnson with the stop. And it's rebounded by Hungary. Here's Salagi. Rabanska has one already. Shot clock to six. Back to Rabanska. Tries to hammer that inside. Nice turn, but it's denied once again. The field block is there. Good help in front of Johnson to knock that one out of play. Possession changes hands. Good field save there from Team USA. If you're watching at home and you're wondering why the defense blocked the ball, it goes out of bounds, but the Team USA retains possession. And water polo, if anyone other than the goalkeeper blocks the ball out of bounds behind the goal, the offense gets the ball, right, and the counterattack moves the other way. It is one of those counterintuitive rules in water polo, but something that the defenses pride themselves on. Stefan's bar out, ricochets off the cage. It stays with Team USA. The way to incentivize defense, right? It's one of those clever clever rules, I think, in water polo that encourages people to field block and encourages defense. Now Mackenzie Fisher. She'll work to Hara Labidis, back to Steffens. Knocked down there, just an ordinary. She'll have two seconds, and Steffens should be around six meters. She can go with this. She'll let fly, low skip. That almost found a way past Majari as actually the field block attempt from Salagi. Nearly deflected it in, but it is stopped by the Hungarian keeper. 
Hungary now again in, in transition. You see a lot of energy for them. I think they know this is the end of their trip. They're trying to get as much out of it as they can. Johnson with the save, knocking it down with the left. And Ashley Johnson now nine stops. And now in transition, here's Jamie Nuschel on the dish from Johnson, moving in, skip shot, good to go. Jamie Nuschel has another, and Team USA adds to their lead, now 9-4, with a timeout call, 2.47 to go in this third quarter. We talk about it, defense leading to offense. Johnson drops the dime, Jamie Nuschel on the move, connecting on the skip, Team USA rolling here in the third. Right now, you know, for us is a focus, you know, to prepare as much as we can for a different style of the games because Greece is playing different, Hungary is playing different than the Greece and Italy. We got Japan who's playing different than everyone. So, you know, that's, that's demanding. Most coaches going to agree from 12 teams, we got 10 teams who for sure are thinking they can medal. And this is the, the great thing and this is giving the men's competition a higher level and more interesting games. So while we're checking in on the USA women, that's USA men's national team head coach Dan Ardovicic, and Johnny's going through the same things that Adam Krikorian is trying to determine his team. The USA men, they are in Europe right now in Montenegro. They just played Montenegro yesterday, losing a shootout thriller, all part of their prep to get ready for these Tokyo Olympic Games. Yeah, and you see on both sides, both the men and women's side, the European focus in water polo, right, where water polo is uh, a dominant sport in a lot of these countries, particularly in Eastern Europe. So both Coach Kikorian and Coach Dosic looking to Eastern Europe to help prepare themselves for the Tokyo Olympics. USA men looking to name their roster as well in the weeks to come. As we're back to live action now, out of the timeout. Anna Illish now working out high, lets it fly, and Ashley Johnson gets a piece of that one, tipping it out. It's back in at two meters after the goalie save. I go back to that Illish counterattack where she tried to lob the ball over the cage. The score at that time was 7 4. So she could have cut the lead to two. It's now 9 4. And you think about those two point swings, those momentum swings in the game, Illish had that opportunity. And, and think about the anatomy of an upset in mm -hmm. any sport. You need to be almost flawless when you get those openings. There's a shot try off the post from Kestie. These moments against the best don't open up all that often, and if you don't execute quickly, a 9 4 advantage. That's right. And Kestie, Illish, these women needed to score a lot of goals today to try to pull that upset off. Still time to do that left in the, in the game, but the opportunities are waning. Here's Seidemann now, Steffens. And we'll get a whistle here. An exclusion off the ball. Power play for the U.S. Steffens now neutral. Team USA on their eighth six on five try. Rabanska, the guilty party. A bobble there from Steffens, and that'll really slow down the six on five. Harla beat us now. Field blocked away. Yang Yoshi, a big denial, but a rebound controlled by Jamie Neuschel. Sides coming even. Advantage is done. USA still on offense and scored for Mackenzie Fisher. Big goal for Mackenzie Fisher, and this is what stops momentum. Watch how she takes her time here. Fakes, fakes, hesitation, and what we call a hezzy in water polo. You see it come off the, her wrist at the end there to beat Majori near side. Any opportunity the Hungarian side to close the gap here in the third quarter, Fisher just took away. And another example of the patience of the U.S. squad on offense. Even as the shot clock is winding down, things are converging. They remain calm and are able to execute. Hungary, a chance to execute on the advantage. The exclusion against Team USA. Harlebitis goes out. Garda. Here's Kestie looking for that next offensive piece. Antal's been quiet in this series. Entry in, a bobble, redirect behind Johnson, a fight for it, and Ashley Johnson there gets it out of harm's way. That was a battle in front of the cage. Illish trying to cash in. The scrum in front of the cage. 
Ashley Johnson gets it out to Paige Hostile now, leading, leading the counterattack. And Team USA dodges another bullet. Hungary misses another opportunity in front of the goal. Yeah, the closest of calls in close. Ordinary, now Musselman. 11 second differential shot and game clock here to wind out the third. Here's Musselman on the shovel from Steffens. The skip is field blocked. Majari sees it at the last second to pull that one out of the cage. And now Hungary can play for the final shot in this third quarter. Shot clock is off. Here's Illish with two left. Let's it go and Johnson gathers with two hands. That's all for this third quarter. Team USA making a statement. They take a three goal match and expand 10-4. The top team in the world, the defending gold medalists. They were dancing early, they're scoring late. Up six, we return with the fourth quarter. USA men's national team, as we told you earlier, gearing up for the Tokyo Olympics, but why not take in some of the scenery? How about these views from Instagram accounts? Chancellor Ramirez, Jack Turner, and Hersig Novi Montenegro, all part of their training. They played Montenegro yesterday. They're going to continue on. They've got their World League Super Final coming up as well in Tbilisi, Georgia. And they are no strangers, John, to Europe. 19 guys from the men's national team, a record played or trained with some of the best clubs in Europe. Here's a look at where they went, the countries that they were living in. The whole experience so strong for this squad. It's such an important part of their development, especially when they couldn't get competition as a team. Yeah, and it really a COVID pivot this yeah. way, but has always been the pathway for American athletes developing in the age group system here, become NCAA athletes, and then matriculate from NCAA athletes into professional water polo players in Europe. That leads to great Olympic performances, and this is what Team USA is doing right now on the men's side. And a shout out to four guys in particular, Alex Obert, Hannes Dobe, Max Irving, and Ben Halleck. Their clubs taking part in the final eight this weekend in Europe, and that's as big as it gets in European and professional club water polo and to have four U.S. athletes, that is a high water mark. At the Champions League final, just like we see in the UEFA Champions League on, on the soccer side of things, Team USA athletes representing at the highest levels. Fourth quarter underway here in El Segundo. Team USA leading Hungary 10-4. And Garda controlling now. Kestiyi working inside. Everyone shows up for Team USA, just an ordinary shot clock to three. Castillo, and that's field blocked away. And Maggie Steffens turning that one away. And if we're going to talk blocks, uh, we have to take a moment to acknowledge the, the passing of an all-time great and a, and a guy with a water polo history, the Utah mm -hmm. Jazz legend Mark Eaton, passing away just a few days ago. He got his start, John, before he was ever blocking shots for the Utah Jazz. He was a water polo goalie in Southern California. And we know his passing meant a lot to the water polo community as they uh, love to see their own move on. Even if it's not a water polo, yeah. do other great things. Yeah. Rest in peace to Mark Eaton, goalkeeper for Westminster High School here in Southern California. Played water polo and then obviously moved on to be the great NBA legend that he was. Our thoughts and prayers out to his family and friends. On the other end now, cross cage. That's well done. Doratya Silagi takes the dish on the cross pass and then goes cross cage to beat Ashley Johnson and putting this one away. Second look. Watch Salaga here. She gets a cross pass. Long cross pass. Stays on her legs and then goes cross cage with a high degree of difficulty when she catches this pass. But anytime the ball moves that far, really hard for the goalkeeper to track it. 
beautiful goal from Team Hungary as they try to inch their way back. And in this case, five goals not insurmountable, but even if they can't work their way back, we've talked about evaluation and gathering right. data. This is all part of it over these next 638. Absolutely, Greg. As you see, another set piece for, from Team USA. Every minute of these games is going to count in this process leading up to Tokyo. Exclusion, Rachel Fatal to Musselman. Again on the six on five, Team USA two for eight right now. Aria Fisher drawing a lot of attention in front of the goal from that center position to draw the exclusion. That was Illish excluded. High pass, Musselman comes down with it. Now Fatal lets it go and connects. Rachel Fatal on the six on five. And she adds her second. A little bobble on the play here. Williams crosses the ball to Musselman, drops it a little bit, but goes a cross-face pass to Rachel Fatal, who rips it right off her wrist. Watch this again from behind the goal, through the shot blockers, near side. Fatal, one of the most dangerous scorers in the world, a former world champion MVP. Yeah, from 2015 in Kazan, and you saw in that replay, keeper at Majari starts to range left, thinking that's the opening, and Fatal comes right back near side. Nothing the keeper could do on this end. In at two meters, Parks takes Steffens for a ride. That's an exclusion on Maggie Steffens. And now the six on five here for Hungary. And hang on, we'll get a second. And now six on four water polo here. So Hungary with a real opportunity. Gilchrist also goes off. Two player advantage and they convert. Van de Vai delivering for Hungary on that six on four try. We talked about this all game, Greg. The exclusions lead to power play opportunities. Parks causing trouble again in front of the goal for Team USA draws the exclusion. Another exclusion happens, and Von Devay gets a wide open look. Nothing you could do about that as Coach Biro gets his sixth goal of the game and another look here for Hungary, see if they can inch their way back. It has to be pleased there. Rare that you get that six on four opportunity, but they're able to take advantage. Now a dangerous pass from Gilchrist. The turnover tried to find Fisher moving towards the cage. In transition, an exclusion. So Aria Fisher gets tied up with Gabriela Such. She'll be excluded, and Hungary will go up on the advantage once more. Now we'll get a timeout called by Coach Biro. Frustration now for Team USA is they're finding themselves on the wrong end of this exclusion battle. Well, you find yourself with a little bit of a lead, uh, especially late in the game. Coach Corian, I'm sure, instructing his team right now, telling him, do not lose focus, keep the energy up. But tangled up in the backcourt, and those backcourt exclusions, an immediate timeout from Coach Biro and Team Hungry, because it gives them the opportunity now to set up their entire power play in front of the goal, it gives them a chance to talk to his team right now and draw up a, a goal-scoring play. Closer look at Coach Biro, former player in his day, and then coach was previously the head coach for the New Zealand women's water polo team and then That's coming right. over to Hungary able to qualify for Rio and then the winner of the Olympic qualifier earlier this year that was an event that of course like many things should have taken place in 2020 ends up getting postponed due to the pandemic they come out in that event and Team USA has been in this as well it was the top two teams to advance so they knew once they got past the semifinal round they were good to go for Tokyo but take the extra step of winning that gold medal and a nice confidence booster for this Hungarian squad. And that's what gave them the invite here. Coach Gorian invites the winner of the Olympic qualifier to come here and train in the United States. As you get a look at some pressure defense on the five on six against Hungary. Power play here out of the timeout. Let's see what Hungary has coming out of that quick stoppage and a dangerous pass there. Garda controls and Mackenzie Fisher, the long arms out high, disrupting everything. Salagi, that's denied. Field block there right in front. Fatal turns it away, and Hungary does not get a shot off. Denied there by the five-on-six defense drawn up there by Coach Green. They put some pressure on the ball. You saw them moving. They didn't stay stagnant in the back and shot block, put pressure on the ball. Let's some to tips, field block, and they get the stop. And now Musselman working to Rachel Fatal on this end. Melissa Seidemann at two meters, and you see the respect for her. She's drawn a crowd already. Fatal a few fakes around the way. Musselman deals to Nuschel. The low skimmer finds a way in. And Jamie Nuschel piling up the goals in this one. The Santa Barbara area native now has three. And we will take a timeout. The passing again, John. It's there for Team USA. And you watch Team USA break the zone. Musselman and Nuschel puts it away. 12-6, Team USA. 
one? Yellow? Yellow. Now blue? No, orange. Now blue. ESPN's exclusive presentation of USA Women's Water Polo is brought to you by Anti-Wave and Cap 7 International. We know a big decision ahead. Who makes the Tokyo roster? Here's some of the key pieces Adam Krikorian has to work with. Rio returners, and then you've got two real veterans that have been here since London. I think one of the best things Coach Krikorian has done with his culture amongst his team is that even though all these athletes are returning, they're fighting as if they haven't made the roster yet. They, didn't, they, they are returning Olympians, but that hasn't been proven just yet. And so every day is a day to compete for your spot when you're on Coach Krikorian's squad. He does like this term, fun comfortable, where you yes. don't always have a sense that you're going to make that next roster. And this isn't like other sports. You're really only as good as the next event that's coming up. Rosters are announced before every major tournament, and it's a fight to make that squad every time out. That's why it's so competitive, not just for Team USA, but for Team Hungary as well. Absolutely, and not only is there a four-year gap between games, this time there's a five-year gap between games, so a lot can happen for athletes, and time is a great resource. Yeah, and a next-level commitment as well for all the athletes that stayed in the mix here after that COVID delay, as Ashley Johnson, one of them, comes up with Yet another save, Ashley Johnson, now 15 big stops. Goalie play on display here for both Majori and Johnson. Lots of saves. And you see really young goalkeepers out there. Keep an eye on both of them. Lots to learn. Shot clock to six. Steffens. Musselman with two on the clock. And a little too much on that skip puts it high and away. Maddie Musselman, three goals, and then also doing the job in the passing game, facilitating on offense with four assists. Maddie Musselman acro across the board, getting her points, involved in almost every single goal Team USA has scored in this game, proving to why she's one of the best players in the world. And Andrew Corian talks about it. You actually hear a lot about Ashley Johnson and Maggie Steffens, as that's a shot try off the post from Such, but he said it just earlier today at practice. This is a team full of all-stars. Yeah. Maybe we talk about Ashley or Maggie more regularly given their accolades, but Maddie Musselman, Rachel Fatal, the list goes on. Mackenzie Fisher, these are some of the best water polo players in the world. Uh, we talked about Melissa Seidemann uh, and, and now Risers, Elise Williams. I mean, um, the, new, the neutral sisters that we've seen, I mean, so much depth on this roster uh, across the last decade of Coach Rikorian's stay here with Team USA and, and historically before then. The, the pipeline is strong and the challenge is to keep it going. Bar out try there from Fisher. And now Rita Kestiyi. Is Team USA on their way to victory once again. This was perhaps the closest call. Johnson adding to her tally. But again, the U.S., they find little cracks and then expose them. They take one goal, turn it into three. They start to execute on the six on five. And before you know it, Team USA in front by six. Rachel Fatal advancing into the front court now with Fisher. And now Williams. Just about out of time. Fisher lets it go, and that's off the post and away. And the rebound controlled. Under two minutes left. And so Hungary, it looks to be working on a live time sub here as Anna Illich starts to make her way towards the middle of the pool. We'll see if they try and sub her in on the fly. That's one of the newer FINA rules, but it's being called hockey subs more casually. 
Yeah, and a great opportunity to try to get some substitutes in the middle of a game. Keep them moving that hockey sub live time. Subs, you see the backhand out of two meters. Anako Gyeong Yoshi, great position. And then the backhander is good to go as the shot clock expires. Center play so important in water polo. Watch Gyeongshi backhands the ball, skips it right underneath it. We call it. It's a no look backhand. It's a tough shot to guard. But that center play is so dominant, so important for Team Hungary as they prepare for the Olympic Games. Regularly a medalist in the Hungarian Championships, competes for the BVSC club in Hungary and is able to convert there. The best teams, they have that one-two punch at two meters. You're talking about Team USA, Seidemann, Arya Fischer, Hungary, Parks, Young Yoshi. That's two tough customers in a two meters. And again, is that if you can draw attention in front of the goal, it makes the game so much easier for the rest of your, your attackers. It frees up open shots, just like basketball. Water polo is a game that plays inside out and provides those opportunities. Seidemann. Field blocked, devoured on that try. Illish right in front to knock it away. On the way down, an exclusion. And we'll get a timeout here with less than a minute to play in the fourth. Hungary calling for time as they are again up on the six on five. This is their 12th try. They're now two for 11. They did have that one moment where it was a six on four, so that counts as a couple of exclusions. And a chance again for Attila Biro to get into the playbook and to reinforce some positives here on the advantage. And you might be wondering why a coach Attila Biro here is to get a good look at what he's drawing up. Would call timeout down by five, 59 seconds left. But we were saying this all series long. These games are preparation for the Olympic Games. This is another chance to evaluate, another chance to get this play just right before you get on the plane to leave Southern California. So Coach Biro not leaving that opportunity on the table. Much like Hungary Team USA, important training opportunities ahead. USA will head to Spain next week. They'll play a friendly with the Spanish squad, and then they'll move on to Athens, Greece for the FINA World League Superfinal. That's an event they have been dominant in right. over the last several years. But it is really the, the last big tune-up where you'll see some of the best teams before Tokyo. About a month before the Olympic Games begin, this World League Superfinal in Athens, Greece will be eight of the top teams in the world going at it for a gold medal. Six on five here for Hungary. Out of the timeout, final minute in this fourth quarter. Illish working to Kestiyi. Near side, here's Dora Antal trying to make her second Olympic squad. Kestiyi now. Timer to 10. Patience from Hungary. A few fakes, and that's off the frame of the cage. Sides coming even, rebound tracked down by Antal. Hungary can go back to work as we near a half minute left in this contest. Illish now threads inside, and we'll see more six on five action. Maggie Steffens going out. Again, Gyeong Yoshi a force in close. 13th power play for Team Hungary. Certainly getting practice here. Illish up on her legs. Johnson got a piece, it's off the post. Team USA gathers it up. Adam Krikorian will call for time with 12 seconds left here in this one. And again, to, to your last question, this game's in the bag. Why call for time? Again, it is part of that preparation. When else can you replicate end-of-game scenarios except the end of the game? And an end-of-game scenario with some pressure. Here on ESPN, everybody's watching back home. It's a good opportunity for Coach Corian to put some pressure in a real live game situation. If this was a one-goal game in the Olympics, this is a chance for them to practice that play where they can, they can make it happen. Get a close look there at, Ma at Maggie Steffens. I'm thinking we might see a seven on six play. This might be the chance to see this where the goalie comes out of the goal. You bring up a great point. This is also a more recent new rule to international play as Ashley Johnson is heading towards the offensive end. But mm -hmm. you can essentially bring out the goalie, go seven on six. And we've seen the teams experiment with this a bit at the end of games during this series. And I think you're going to see it at the Olympic Games. It's going to be that quote unquote trick play that they yeah. put into action at the very end, especially if you're down a goal. Yeah, and this is a big opportunity. A new rule for water polo, but an, an old one for hockey. And here we go, seven on six. Here's Musselman. That's Ashley Johnson in at two meters. Musselman around the way. Here's Fisher. Johnson guarded closely. One second left. They won't get a shot off. And Hungary crashing in on Ashley Johnson. They weren't going to allow the goalie to connect in close. And a strong defensive stand. But it's Team USA with the victory here, 12 to 7. Four-game sweep for Team USA over Hungary, and Adam Krikorian can exhale for one night as Team USA continues their march towards the Tokyo Games. This again, John, like so many in this series, 
you saw the best of what Team USA can do and then some things they want to work on. And that's what these friendly matches, these preparation matches, offer the opportunity to, to, to get those down. But I think for everybody watching back home on ESPN, if you're seeing water polo for the first time or if you're a seasoned veteran and see this all along, you can't help but have great respect for these athletes and what they can do in the water the entire time, the stamina, the athleticism it takes to play this sport on display tonight. Ashley Johnson coming in for the seven on six. Didn't get her chance, but she did her job in net. All part of a Team USA victory. Johnson does the job, so do the Americans. 4-0 sweep over Hungary. You never know where the next Olympian might be coming from, but it could be water polo. And that starts with Splash Ball. Splash Ball is a program for children ages 5 through 9 designed to introduce them to the sport of water polo while promoting water safety. Improve swimming skills and learn a sport you'll love for a lifetime. For more information, visit SplashBallUSA.org. Final in Los Angeles. Team USA sweeps Hungary 12-7. The score in this finale in El Segundo. A close one early, and then the U.S. turns it on. Balanced effort once again. Matty Musselman, huge day to spur the USA squad on to victory. Now we're joined by the head coach for Team USA, Adam Krikorian. Uh, coach, we'll jump right in. It's yes. something I know that you want to touch on. Olympic team naming originally scheduled for tomorrow. We talked about yeah. it at the top and then now moving to June 23rd. I know this is a tough choice in yeah. any year. Just give us a little insight to that move on your end. Well, it's uh, it wasn't the plan. I'll tell you that much. Um, I think we ideally we wanted to, to name the team before we went on this first uh, road trip. And, uh, you know, the closer and closer it got, the more it just didn't make sense. Uh, especially going 453 days without playing a game. Um, the last two weeks in the competition that we've had, we've just gotten so much information. Um, and without being on, on a travel trip for as long as we have, it's just not the smart and prudent decision. And obviously, as a coach, you want to make sure that you're completely confident that you have all uh, the, 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 the answers and, and the info possible. And it's just it's the prudent move. And, and you know, in this in this day and age, we're so used to trying to be adaptable and flexible, and um, change is difficult. I understand that, but this is something we're we're used to, and we need to continue to get used to it. And um, uh, again, uh, we look forward to naming the team ultimately June 23rd. But for t today, not going to happen. Coach, you referenced 453 days without a game. Yeah. And most of those 453 days were spent here domestically yeah. in the United States. Can you yeah. can you speak to the value of getting on the airplane here yeah. on Sunday and traveling out and competing again on the road back in Europe? Yeah, I've never been so excited to actually travel <laughs> um, yeah. and get yeah. on a plane, and I can't wait to get over to Europe. It, you know, it's just, it's been tough. I mean, I'll tell you what, it's been tough, and, and it's been really hard on, on the athletes to be able to just train against each other. Imagine you're out there listening to this. Imagine training against the same people. That's right day in and day out for 453 days. Um, and, this, and this is a, in this physical game, right, in this physical sport. So for us to be able to get on the road, uh, experience a hotel, remember what that feels like, see other teams and compete against other teams as one is just, I mean, there's been so much joy over here in the last two or three weeks in, in this experience, and obviously there's going to be a lot, a lot more. Adam, each of these games we've been able to highlight someone who's stood out, not by design, but just the balance of your team. It seems right. like someone has had their day yeah. each game. Tonight, Maddie Musselman showing her depth, and we, we were talking a bit about this is someone who is now fully healthy. It's almost scary to think about what she provides, feeling a 100% on offense. Yeah, she. I mean, she just keeps getting better and better, and it's a testament to... Uh, the work that she's put in and uh, how open she is to learning and trying new things. She's someone who from literally day one, she started with us back when she was 15 or 16 years old. Uh, she came in with these huge eyes. She listens to everything, not only I say, but what every teammate says. And from 
She learns not only from her experience, but she learns from everyone's experience around her. And that's what the best ones do. Uh, and that's why she just continues. Obviously, she's super talented as well, but then she just continues to get better and better. And it's uh, obviously she played great tonight. Yeah, we talked a lot about Maddie in the broadcast. She's involved in so many plays uh, on offense, either scoring or, or passing. But we're going back to that team selection, that evaluation process. There's an old saying that goes, you know, you don't pick the best team, you pick the right team. Right. So can you think about, can you speak a little bit to what uh, the right team looks like for you this summer in Tokyo? Yeah, I mean, we're still trying to figure that out. And I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that, John, mm -hmm. because, it, you know, um, when you, again, when you don't play against competition, <laughs> Um, the people who you're actually going to be competing against uh, to obviously play your best, it's difficult to, to know what the right team is. You know, you're thinking about size, you're thinking about speed, you're thinking about position, obviously. You're evaluating not only your strengths and weaknesses, but every team and opponent that you're going to play. And not being able to see these teams over that long stretch has made it really difficult and again uh, um, it was a hard decision but at the end of the day uh, i'm actually super confident and i'm i'm certainly glad that that we made that call coach Corian, congrats on the win best of luck on the trip to europe and uh, we'll see you back here june 23rd thank you guys appreciate it team usa takes it over hungary 12-7 to close out this four game set we're back with more from el segundo after this Welcome back, Los Angeles, California, Hungary, Team USA. A wrap on a four-game set. Team USA takes the finale here in El Segundo. 12-7, now we're joined by the team captain for this USA squad, Maggie Steffens. Maggie, great to have you here as we as we look back at this series and this game. I know you're the captain. You play a big role in this squad, but how fun is it just to look around the pool sometimes and watch the depth and talent of your teammates? It's pretty amazing, and honestly, it's inspiring. That's, I think, what gives us the energy we need in, in tough games is the ability to look around, and in any given moment, any person on our team can step up, whether it's on defense, on offense, in the transition, and that's what makes our team, you know, uh, such a weapon because it doesn't matter who's in the water or who's on the bench. We can come at you from all angles. So it's pretty inspiring for me to look around and, and see the growth that we've had over the past two years and even from, you know, 2017 looking at where we are today so really proud of our team but we have a lot to improve on a lot to look back on video from these games and and just keep getting better maggie coach abdi here looking looking ahead what are you most uh excited about of getting back on an airplane here to compete you know in an international tournament 453 games since we we, we uh days since we last played right before these series uh what are you most excited about before next week uh, to be honest, I'm really just looking forward to traveling with the girls. You yeah. know, we've we've been at home, which is so great, and it's such an incredible opportunity to play at home and, and represent our country at home in front of our fans and, and family and friends. Um, but there's something really special about representing the USA across, across the water, um, wherever we go. And it's a huge honor, and we take that, you know, with – with a lot of pride and I'm simply looking forward to the opportunity to travel once again, get in that hotel room, laser focus, looking at our mission, you know, making some memories, but also the opportunity to represent the USA outside our country. It's, it's a huge honor for us and, and we don't take it lightly. Maggie, you've talked so often about even though you've had all the success, you still have this goal of being an Olympian. You still mm -hmm. enjoy this challenge. This year presented challenges unlike ever before with the pandemic. How do you go into this next six weeks, two months towards Tokyo trying to stay at the level this team has been at? What's that challenge like to make sure that you're still as good as you've been? Mm -hmm. Well, you wouldn't be trying out for the Olympics if you weren't up for the challenge, right? <laughs> Doesn't matter what challenge comes our way, whatever adversity comes our way. And, and you asked it in the first question. That's why we're a team. 
there's not you're never alone you always have one another and and that's what makes this process and this journey so special is that yeah we're gonna face a lot of challenges we have faced a lot of challenges the whole world has faced a lot of challenges in the past uh, you know two years but that just gives us even more purpose to inspire our country inspire you know the world show our resilience show our passion for what we do and, and just go out there and remember at the end of the day we're together we have one another we have our team to to face whatever comes our way so these next six weeks we're like i said we're laser focused uh you know sharpening the knife to make sure we're ready to to get after it in tokyo but we realize there's a greater purpose to the, all of this right this this olympics is really special it's an opportunity to show uh, our resilience, our inspiration, and show how together we are as a unit, uh, as a country, and even, honestly, as a, as a world. Maggie, you talk a lot about inspiration there. Who are, who are some of the athletes or teams outside of water polo where you draw inspiration from? I think we all saw the infographic with all your accomplishments and still mm -hmm. being a, a young woman. You've been at this for, for some time and have clashed some great things. What keeps you inspired? Or are there some people in the Olympic movement or outside of mm -hmm. water polo that inspire you to keep you going? past present future mm. you know we're, we're living in the present but you're mm. constantly drawing inspiration from your past i even think about the women that played before us you know mm. you think about the 2000 olympics that was the first time in 100 years that women were allowed to play water polo at the olympics yeah. and what did they go through to make sure that here i am today on tv you know they would have never had this opportunity and to play for them right and then for their future how can we in 12 16 20 years take our sport even further and, and let women showcase their passion, showcase their strength and do it in, in you know, a place like this. So um, definitely our past, present, future, inspire our youth and, and open the doorways for them like, you know, our past did for us. And we're able to take that from our present, all the, the women's teams around us. Uh, you know, Abby Wambach, big shout out to her. She actually talked to our team the other day and, and to just realize this is more than just water polo. This is more than just uh, women's sports. It's about coming together as, as one. Um, so that was pretty cool to, to kind of have her join our circle for a little bit. Hey, Maggie Steffens, inspiring stuff. Uh, congrats on the win. We're looking forward to seeing you and the rest of the squad coming up here in Tokyo. Thank you. All right, Maggie Steffens, all part of a Team USA sweep of Hungary, gearing up for the world's biggest sporting event. We're back to El Segundo to wrap it up after this timeout. Welcome back. Wrapping things up here in El Segundo, a 12-7 win for Team USA over Hungary as we close out this USA Water Polo Showcase. And let's take a look now at our clean athlete of the game. John, no surprise, Maddie Musselman in this one. She did it all, and on offense, she was so fantastic. Three goals, four assists, was involved in so many key plays. Well, you can pass and you can shoot and you can stay balanced and facilitate the game the way Maddie Musselman did tonight. You're going to be a dominant player and be the athlete of the game many times over. This is someone who still has a year left for the UCLA Bruins just getting started on the world stage. Look at our final numbers here. Power plays, they told a story and that Hungary had a lot of opportunities. They'll look back at these numbers and wish they could have cashed in more. Yeah, it stands out right at us, Greg. Two of 13 on the power play. Didn't get it done. Not enough on those 35 shot opportunities for both teams. And then I look back to that point you brought up. It was a three-goal game at one point. Hungary yeah. chipping away. Team USA tacks on two quick ones, expands to five. They never look back. Yeah, you got to, those momentum swings, those specific opportunities to stop the bleeding at that point. Those are going to be big come Tokyo this summer. So wrapping things up here, a big four-game series in the books for Team USA. We've talked a bit about it, but your final thoughts here as this squad prepares and looks ahead to name a team and then compete in Japan. Well, it, what I think about is how great of a resource time is. It's our, it's our greatest resource. And so the 453 days that Team USA did not play leading up to this, for some, there was a, a lot of time to get better and to get stronger and faster and smarter to play water polo. And for others, it was, it was a, tough, a tough time to get through. And I think about every minute between now and the games and how much better this team's going to be get to try to win another gold medal. Yeah, this USA squad, they're just getting started. Big things ahead. The Tokyo Olympics are on the way. Team USA, they'll be there. That's all for us here in El Segundo for our entire crew. Our producer, Steve Elkin, our director, Jason Moon, my partner, John Abdu, Greg Meskel saying thanks so much for joining us tonight and throughout this series, Team USA and Hungary, a USA water polo showcase. Have a great rest of your night. Take care, everyone.